Hello and welcome back. This is Nom Nom and we are once again in Oxygen Not Included. Trying something a little different today. I wanted to do an experiment on an ethanol phase change cooling system. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks. Hello and welcome back. Here we are. We are in the laboratory and this is just a little non-survival base, casual base that I set up to work on some experiments. So we've got so Dave's doing some improvements down here right now. Not really pertinent. Clean it up, boys and girls. This is what we're looking at. Uh, so this is the phase change thermoregulator system using ethanol. Um, so here's how it works. We have ethanol sitting at the base of some thermoregulators. The thermoregulators get hot. They heat the ethanol up to above its gas temperature of 78.4, so 81.4 it turns into a gas. Then it goes up and hits these tiles which are being cooled by the output from the thermoregulators. The gas changes phase from gas to back to liquid, rains down the aqua tuners, cooling them off. And then that cycle repeats ad nauseum. We have a temperature sensor saying if this is minus 200 degrees, if it's above minus 200 then run the thermal aqua uh, run the thermal regulators, otherwise do not run them. And I've got these set up on a gas bypass system where if the thermal regulator is turned off, the gas will still continue to pass through and continue on the loop. Uh, just to demonstrate that, I will turn them off. And we see that the gas loop is still chugging along as before. Turning it back on, and it continues to function. So no matter what I have to do here, this uh, loop should continue to run. All right, so what we've got then is we've got ethanol that's going hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. How does that help us? Well, that helps us because of the specific heat properties of ethanol. In a gas, it's 2.148, but in a liquid, it's 2.460. So therefore, when it changes from gas, I'm sorry, when it changes from liquid to gas, it effectively can hold less heat, but the heat just goes away. Then it turns back into a liquid where it can then absorb more heat, it turns back into a gas, loses some of its heat. That heat is effectively getting deleted from the game. So uh, what I have here is four systems that were set up identically originally, but then I decided to try uh, liquid over on this one side. So I had hydrogen over here at about 30 degrees in each one of these. It was like 26 or 30 degrees in each one of these. And I had a vacuum in this uh, center area. Two gold amalgam thermoregulators, early game stuff, some aluminum tiles. My pipe is just sandstone and copper. Could have been aluminum just as well. Uh, and I have a couple aluminum shift plates in here. That's it. Uh, automation. Uh, I can't see, I can't view the automation. Automation is pretty simple. It's just this thermoregulator uh, temperature sensor going to these two to turn them off. Let's see if I can get to that overlay. There we go. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's the extent of my automation. The gas piping is identical in all four of these. I had some feeder lines, obviously, to get them set up. Uh, and I had a pump in here. I had a miniature pump in here to draw a vacuum. And I just deleted it using the debugging tools, so that's why we have that bridge left over. Uh, and over here, I actually went in and deleted the bridge because I saw I was getting this one tile was getting cold. Uh, it was translating heat across the bridge. I could have done it on all four, but effectively that's just creating some inefficiencies in my system. So if anything, it's proving it out uh, under even worse circumstances than what would be ideal. So what we see here is that uh, on the oxygen, or I'm sorry, hydrogen pipe, the contents are coming in at minus 40 degrees. They're coming in here, coming out here at minus 70 degrees. So this should cool it down by 28 degrees. It goes up here to the top around there at minus 70, comes across here, comes out here like minus 46. So we have a, in this case, 44 to 47, three degree temperature difference every time it goes through the loop. I've actually seen it to be as high as like nine degree temperature difference. Just depends on where it's at in its flashing cycle. Uh, this one over here, minus 45, 
minus 46, so it's picking up minus one degree. This one here is more interesting because we've got this huge body of water that started at nine degrees and is now two degrees, and it's probably been about 40 cycles since I did that switch over. Um, and this one, the gas is coming in at uh, 0.3 degrees, and coming out at minus three degrees. So this is pretty significant. I think it's uh, because it's pretty early in its cycle still. And this one here, we've got minus 51, minus 52 degrees, minus 56 degrees, so almost a four degree difference. And these have been running for about 100 cycles. Uh, it took me a little while to get it set up. Uh, I had the dupes do some of the work, although I did most of it in debug mode. Um, and you can see I've got minus 52 degrees here, minus 49 here, minus 46 here. So it's, it's working pretty good. Why do I have four set up? Um, I had different quantities of ethanol. Uh, this one had uh, 200 kilograms of ethanol per square. Uh, this one had, no, this one had, yeah, this one had 250. Uh, I'd have to go back and look now. I think this one had 150, 250, and this one also had 150, but this one had a layer of carbon dioxide in the top. So uh, when this flashes to, we'll, we'll watch this one. When this flashes to ethanol, the carbon dioxide is a buffer uh, between the metal tile and the hot ethanol, and carbon dioxide has a poor thermal transfer rate, so uh, thermal conductivity rate, so it acts as a buffer um, so that I didn't have as many extremes happening up here in the metal tile. Um, let's see, this one you'll see does not have thermal shift plates. When I did not have thermal shift plates here, I actually had too good of a thermal buffer, and I wasn't, I was just getting a bunch of hot ethanol, and it wasn't um, phase changing back into liquid. So this one was probably the one that was working the best out of all of them, um, and that's why I decided to go ahead and try it to cool down a liquid. Again, it's cooled down this liquid six and a half degrees in about 50 cycles. Not great, but we're using a gas to cool a liquid. So I don't know how to calculate the DTUs to bring down uh, one kilogram of ethanol, uh, six and a half degrees, but it's a significant amount of cooling. Again, all early game materials, and my heat's not, I, I'm not piping the heat somewhere else, I'm just straight up deleting the heat. That's all there is to it. Um, again, this one seems to be the one that works the best. There's the piping. There's the power, pretty simple. Again, this wire here was just for the small pumps I used to make a vacuum. And this is the automation. That's it, that's all there is to it. Okay, so that's all well and good, but what if I wanted to try that with an aqua tuner? I'm glad you asked, Uncle Nom Nom. What if I wanted to try that with an aqua tuner? Here we go, thermal aqua tuner. Aqua Tuner is a little bit later game material. I did go ahead and make this out of steel. Uh, while I was at it, I went ahead and made it with late game materials. So I have insulation for the pipe. I could have easily just used ceramic. Um, I have ceramic tiles going around part of it, sandstone in the middle. Um, I put an extra layer of ceramic going all the way around just because I saw some temperature bleeding through. Um, and then this is uh, just aluminum radiant pipe. So And aluminum shift plates and aluminum metal tile. So it's kind of a mix of hot and cold. Uh, this was really, uh, this heat coming through here uh, on this insulated tile is what really prompted me to put some ceramic around the outside. But ceramic's not too hard to get to. By the time you're doing th thermal aqua tuners, uh, I think you can you could easily build ceramic pipe or ceramic tile. Uh, so this guy, there you go, see it's doing the same thing. It's heating up the ethanol. There was uh, two K of ethanol in here, so there was 666 per square. Um, Let's take a look at the plumbing. It's pretty simple. Again, I have this on a bypass. If the aqua tuner stops running because of the temperature, then the liquid still continues to pass through. Uh, aqua tuner doing its job. I started in here with a gold amalgam aqua tuner, but uh, because it's in a vacuum and it wasn't fully submerged in ethanol, it actually started to overheat uh, right as it was gasifying the uh, ethanol and it started taking some damage and I just replaced it with steel. Um, if you put more ethanol in here, I think you could get away with using a uh, thermal aqua tuner that was made of gold amalgam. So uh, one thing I've noticed uh, as it goes through its cycle here, um, the liquid is coming in at minus 8 right now, and it's coming out at like minus 22. 
It's going up here at minus 22, coming out here about minus 18. Uh, then it's passing through here. This liquid started at about 40 degrees and now is at minus 7 degrees. Um, so it's doing a pretty good job. And this has been running for about mm, 40 cycles, I want to say. I haven't been doing this for, as I, I decided to do this after I was sort of done doing this experiment over here. Um, I have a feeder tank here. That tank was just used to put um, ethanol inside of this pipe. And I've got my automation set up where it says if it's above negative 100 degrees, then go ahead and run. And the reason I do that is because the thermal aqua tuner will bring the temperature down by 14 degrees and it, it turns into a solid at 114.1. So I never want it to go below 114.1. So if it's at minus 100, when it comes in here, it'll come out at minus 114 and remain liquid. If it's less than negative 100, it will not be processed by the aqua tuner and will never turn into a solid. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show. Uh, my ethanol flashed here into gas and then it never makes it past this tile. So it's hitting these templates here and it's turning back into liquid. And so this remains a vacuum up here, which helps me insulate this. That's why I have this little bump out here. I didn't want tile touching this thermal shift plate because then it would translate the cold from the thermal shift plate into the adjacent tile. So this way, my template's at minus 12. It's not losing heat to the insulated tile that it would have otherwise been in contact with. Um, never mind this setup here. This was just me evacuating the atmosphere from the system here, and then I just used the debugger to wall it off. Um, it could easily be done with a water lock. Um, I just chose to do it this way because I'm in debug mode. Um, so this system is working really well. If I take a look at the water system, again, coming into the thermal aqua tuner at minus 8.5, coming out at minus 22.5. At my cooler at the top, it's coming in at minus 22, out at minus 13. So effectively, it's coming out of the system at minus 8.5, coming back in at minus 16.5. So I'm picking up eight degrees of cooling in 10 kilogram packets of ethanol into whatever system I want to put it into. Um, I'm, I'm really curious to know if I can get it down to minus 100. Um, props to the other streamers out there who are doing these experiments because this takes a ridiculous amount of time to set up and test. I did not realize how much effort you guys are putting in and I just want to say thank you. <laughs> that is That is all. Uh, all right, well, I will uh, do an update and maybe in a few days with how cold I get this, but there it is. That is my phase change ethanol cooling system. I hope you guys find this useful. All right, thanks a lot. So Nom Nom, signing out.